The Gombe Chimpanzee War was a war between rival groups of chimpanzees in western Tanzania. Until world-leading primatologist Jane Goodall observed this brutal war, it was largely thought that chimpanzees were placid and gentle apes. They were our kinder cousins, and human atrocities like savage killings, premeditated murder, and uncontrolled aggression were unique to mankind. But witnessing the attacks in Gombe Stream National Park back in the 1970s changed our perception of these incredible animals. They, too, had a nasty side, and one that shocked scientists far and wide. Located in western Tanzania and bordered by Lake Tanganyika to its west, Gombe Stream National Park is one of the smallest national parks in Tanzania. It consists of grassland, woodland, and tropical rainforest. The steep ravines and dense forest habitat mean that it is most easily accessed by boat. It is home to a range of primates from baboons, colobus, and vervet monkeys, to red-tailed and blue monkeys, hippos, leopards, bush pigs, and a huge variety of bird species also frequent the area. However, it is most famous for its chimpanzees. Initially, when Jane Goodall reported her findings, describing what she had witnessed as war, scientists didn't believe her. They accused her of over-anthropomorphizing the apes or interfering with their natural behavior. She was known to feed the chimps that she researched, probably influencing their behavior. Since her work, however, chimpanzee behavior has been studied in less intrusive ways, and fighting and wars have always been documented within their societies. Jane spent 30 years studying and observing chimpanzees. When she began observing those found in Gombe Stream National Park, there was one main group of them. She recorded their movements, their behaviors, their incredible intellect, and their societal interactions. Perhaps the most famous of her observations was that of tool use. She recorded the chimpanzees breaking off twigs, stripping them off their leaves, and then threading them into the holes in termite mounds. They were effectively fishing for termites. When the termites crawled all over the twigs, the chimpanzees would pull out the twig and lick them all off. They showed the younger chimps how to do it too. They also used other tools like rocks to break open nuts or chewing up leaves to make sponges, using them to soak up water to drink. Although skirmishes often broke out, Jane never predicted that war was imminent. The group began fracturing in 1971 following the death of the leader. Over the course of eight months, a group of chimpanzees separated from the main clan and formed a rival group. They were led by two adult males who were brothers, named by Jane Goodall as Hugh and Charlie. This new group also included a further four adult males, three adult females, and their young. They occupied a southern territory, and the main group kept away from them in the north. The two groups largely avoided each other, with males occasionally screeching at one another from the boundaries of their territories. These were displays of their strength, but that's all it seemed to be for a couple of years, until something changed. The war began with an unprovoked attack from the original group. Godi, a male from the newly formed group, was up in a tree eating fruit when disaster struck. Six males from the original group snuck up and ambushed them. He only noticed them when it was too late. He leaped down from the tree and ran. The others chased him. Hot on his heels, they caught up to him. One male grabbed Godi's legs and pulled him to the ground, whilst one chimp held Godi down, pinning him to the floor. The others pummeled him, biting, punching, and kicking him. They stamped on him and screeched loudly. Defenseless and unable to fight them off, Godi was battered so severely that he died from his injuries. The six males celebrated the calculated kill by whooping with joy and jumping up and down. One male picked up a four-pound rock and hurled it onto Godi's body. They rampaged around and around, picking up tree branches and throwing them around while Godi's body lay limp and lifeless on the ground. This was only the beginning. Although there are, of course, 
regular times when individuals in the animal world fight, sometimes to the death, over territories, mating rights, food, and more. This was the first time conservationists had reported cold-blooded, calculated killing amongst non-human animals. Following the brutal death of Godi, more males from the separated group were picked off by the original gang. Jane Goodall witnessed the attacks again and again. She observed one attacking chimpanzee tear a strip of skin from a dying chimp's thigh. She saw another cupping his hands underneath the deep, gaping wound of one victim, collecting the blood in his hands, and then drinking it. Perhaps one of the most heartbreaking attacks that Jane witnessed was on Goliath. He was an elderly chimp who, although left the original group and joined the breakaway chimps, remained friendly with the rivals. Many of the young males had looked up to him, forming close bonds with him as he taught them the essentials. When the attack on Goliath came, he tried to cover himself and protect his head and body from the catastrophic blows. As he lay there quivering on the floor, one of the younger chimpanzees who had once considered Goliath a childhood hero beat him again and again and again. He died of his injuries whilst his attackers screeched and whooped, drumming tree roots in celebration. Typically, fights within the animal kingdom are not deadly. They are used to assert dominance. If a conflict is so brutal that it results in death, then that is a risky strategy, as both individuals may end up dead. Usually, conflicts between animals will end before injuries are too severe. In the case of the chimpanzees, they seem to be maintaining their territory, but scientists were puzzled by the brutality of their behavior. They would patrol their territory in groups, silently walking through the forest. Every now and then, they would stop and strain their ears to listen for intruders. If they came across a single chimpanzee, they would attack it. If it was a female, the attacks rarely resulted in death, but the males were often killed. If the patrolling chimps came across two or more opposition chimps, they didn't attack. They only targeted chimps that they could beat without incurring injuries themselves. Holding the individual down whilst delivering the blows also ensured they did not get injured in the attack. Female chimps often rejoin rival communities after the systemic murder of their mates. But this doesn't explain the excessive cruelty displayed by the Gombe chimps. Some of the females were beaten and kidnapped by the aggressors and forced into submission and into living with the kidnappers. Researchers looked into the costs and benefits of vicious and unprovoked attacks. They discussed the possibility that early human hunter-gatherers also behaved in a similar way, ambushing a rival, capturing him or her alone, and then inflicting such intense and prolonged damage, took the opponent out then and there. Conducting a powerful, full-force attack into disputes without fights dragging on for months or even years. Scientists have likened these tactics to that of Nazi Germany, known as Blitzkrieg. This was a wartime move relying on ambush and surprise to overwhelm an enemy, such as the Soviet Union, before they had a chance to respond and fight back. Psychologists also speak of the contact hypothesis, which was a theory developed for human behavior. It states that as two groups become more and more distant, they are more likely to develop tensions. But if communication and contact are maintained between the two groups, then there is always hope for peace. It seems human theories such as these are applicable to some of our closest relatives as well as us. Whilst we've known about scuffles over food, territories, and mating rights within the animal kingdom for centuries, true war was thought to be unique to human nature. From those first observations made by Jane Goodall and many observations since, it seems chimpanzees are also capable of brutal behavior, resulting in cold-blooded murder. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time. time.